Kit Kat. It's one of America's favorite candy bars. And we're not alone in our affection for this chocolate treat. Kit Kat is the number one selling chocolate bar in the world. Mm. Kit Kat. <laughs> Fabulous. Mm. Why are Kit Kats so universally loved? Is it a fluke? Some quaint chocolatier's lucky guess? Hardly. Each Kit Kat bar represents thousands of hours of research and millions of dollars of technology, all to get it just right. The chocolate's very sort of rich. It's quite crunchy. Nice wafer biscuit. Nice to dunk in your tea. If anyone loves candy more than Americans, it's the British. Every man, woman and child in Great Britain eats an average of five candy bars a week. So it should come as no surprise that Nestle has built its largest chocolate factory here in York, England. Uh, we're in what we call Kit Kat 5. This is the most modern and up-to-date Kit Kat plant we have here in the York factory. We produce on this plant around 3 million bars a day of the two-finger Kit Kat products we sell in the United Kingdom. With some 418 Kit Kat bars eaten around the world every second, it's critical that each one tastes perfect and tastes the same. That's where top-of-the-line technology comes into play. This is where it all begins. This is where we actually take the basic flour and water and we mix the two together at very high speeds to make a very nice smooth paste. And once that batter is actually made then it's dispatched across into the oven where we actually then bake the wafer into sheets. What you have here is the finished sheets of wafer coming off the oven. We're taking the liquid batter, as you see being made earlier, and that's being sprayed onto the hot plates inside. And the two plates come together and cook the liquid batter in a continuous process. Once that process is finished, the finished sheets of cooked wafer is being taken off and then cooled down, ready for the next process. The next step is to coat the wafers with praline filling applied precisely by machine, never by hand. Then the wafer sheets are cut down to size, just in time for the finishing touch, the chocolate. So we're taking the liquid chocolate and we're going to create what we call a shell. The Kit Kat bars then come out of the cooler where they've been for about the past 25 minutes cooling the chocolate. They then pass down the main belt which leads on to the metal detector, or the first of our many metal detectors. Candy through a metal detector? It's all part of quality control, making sure that no tainted chocolate bars reach the public. Uh, once they've been through the metal detector, they come down the main spine to what we call our four into one section, which is where we have four wrapping machines feeding one wrapping store. In all, 1,360 Kit Kat bars are wrapped each minute in their trademark silver foil and red wrapping. One of the critical components of mass manufacturing is consistency, making sure that each bar tastes delicious every day in every climate. Hong Kong is hot, it's humid. You put a cookie in Hong Kong and it practically melts, right? And forget crunch. We want our Kit Kat in Hong Kong to be crunchy every time you bite into it. That crunchiness is the core of the Kit Kat experience, and it's no accident. The Kit Kat crunch took decades to develop. At Nestle Roundtree's Research and Development Center, crispiness goes high tech. On this study, we've been looking at um, the influence of the time of cooking or the temperature of cooking on the wafer and what a Kit Kat wafer needs to be to be nice and crispy and also to resist packaging and not crush. To measure texture we'd use a machine like this where uh, in this case we're going to bend a wafer to the point of breaking and we measure the force generated whilst that is happening and so we get a result. This machine is called a texture analyzer. A computer gradually increases the pressure on the bar by the tiniest increments. Test starts now. Force is rising. Bang, there was the break of the wafer and the force drops down to zero. The results there on the graph show that this uh, sheet of wafer was within the normal specification of Kit Kat. But the crunch is only part of the story. 
The mysteries of the chocolate itself are guarded here in the chocolate technology room or chocolate hall. The kind of work we do in the chocolate hall is mainly preparing recipes, different types of recipes, of course, which we, we keep fairly secret because uh, this is the nature of the business is quite competitive and uh, we don't want to let our other competitors know uh, how, we, how we get our special Kit Kat flavor. Although Nestle has been pleased with Kit Kat's smooth chocolate taste, new prototypes are constantly created and sampled. Who says you can't improve a good thing? This um, wafer machine is um, used to simulate a factory machine, so we can control many different parameters that are difficult to control within the factory. We can try lots of different things for baking times, baking, um, baking temperatures, and where the batter is actually deposited. Once the new Kit Kats are made, the taste tests begin, as the new prototypes are compared to the old standard. In, in the sensory evaluation department, in there in the center, we are checking the appearance of the product, the flavors, the, the taste, and the texture of the product. So, for example, if we want to change uh, the, the flour of the, the wafer for Kit Kat, and we want to make sure that the consumer is not going to see any difference in his Kit Kat when buying the, the new Kit Kat. These experiments, familiar to the entire food industry, are known as triangle tests. Three samples are presented. One is the regular well-known bar, one the experimental model, and the third a duplicate of one of the first two. And so they have to answer which sample is the old one, explain or try to explain the difference they are perceiving. But it's not just about taste. 